Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast that comes to you from the Ukrainian capital Kiev. I'm Gaurav Savant. U.S. President Joe Biden says that a Russian attack on Ukraine is imminent. We're reporting from Kiev where you see a large number of locals and tourists. Uh, they are here at what is known as the Independence Square in Kiev. They are here celebrating a weekend, celebrating time off uh, with friends and family. Uh, a lot of children also out here in Kiev. But we also especially from dubai to take a photo with i love ukraine guys okay. come and visit yeah Bye. but don't forget to wear your masks guys okay <laughs> have you also come from dubai yeah and are you enjoying yourself in ukraine yeah i love ukraine, yeah, no, love ukraine. I've, come, I've come from new zealand you come from new yeah, zealand yeah and, and ukraine's the best ukraine is the best so uh, you, you can see a, n a number of tourists here uh, is is there tension in the air is it palpable well we went to one of the um, camps in uh, very close to Kiev uh, where some training was on and some locals uh, were being trained uh, in medical evacuation, casualty evacuation, even handling of weapons. And these are civilians in Ukraine who say that they are undergoing the basic training to be able uh, to defend their country as they say. We bring you this ground report. Окей, okay, мы здесь научились, как владеть оружием, и завтра мы продолжим, чтобы мы могли себя защитить. Здесь мы обучаемся, как владеть своим телом, страхом, не бояться, знать, как ориентироваться друг на друга, разные положения, как мы передвигаемся в пространстве, как мы смотрим друг на друга, как мы слышим друг друга, какие жесты мы показываем и что это обозначает. Это нам поможет, когда начнется паника, мы будем друг друга слышать и понимать. Это очень нужное занятие для цивильных людей нужно их проводить в масштабном в масштабной площади чтобы люди не паниковали это поможет in icy cold winter training of the civilians that's happening at this point of time and with me is mamuka the commander of the legion uh, commander what kind of training of civilians is happening here oh we are training civilians today to uh, help them uh, to get the basic information about the extreme situations what might happen in ukraine to uh, learn uh, the first aid uh, let's say basics how they can help uh, injured people Unfortunately, today civilians need to know that, and uh, the interest is very big. We have about 3,000 uh, civilians to train, and uh, we broke them into groups, and we are trying to train them all. And parallelly, we are having a recruitment process. We are um, uh, getting uh, volunteers from different countries. Uh, you were talking about women undergoing training. What kind of training are women undergoing? Is it also in the weapons same, and systems? It is the same training as everybody. There is no special training for women or for men. They are doing all the same and they are uh, trying to learn how to, de to defend their country. Uh, they are uh, trying to learn how to defend their families and their freedom. So. Unfortunately, in 21st century, we have to learn civilians how to defend themselves against Russia. Dasha and many civilians like her are currently undergoing weapons training here in Kiev, Ukraine. Their aim is to be in a position to be able to defend their country. The situation appears to be getting more desperate, especially with the United States now saying that at least the U.S. is convinced that Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided that there will be an invasion of Ukraine and not if, but when. The people here want to be prepared to be at the borders to defend their country and be the second line of defense with their soldiers. With cameraman Pavan Kumar at Kiev, Ukraine, Gaurav Savant for India Today. Russia, of course, has been playing down what the United States has been claiming all along. U.S. President Joe Biden went on record to say that the U.S. is convinced that Russia is about to attack Ukraine. And not in a matter of weeks, but in a matter of days. They say that there's satellite imagery to show that Russian troops have been amassed at borders. But is there fear anywhere here? Uh, if you just look around, uh, mothers with children in prams, 
families, friends, tourists, they are all here. And this is the central part of Kiev. This is where uh, a lot of tourists come. This is this is actually the heart of the Kievs. The parliament is, is right here. The, the market complex is right here. This is like the tourist quarter of Kiev. And it is... Of course, there are there are larger crowds on usual days. Uh, it's a nice and bright, uh, sunny afternoon today. And yet, what's the ground situation? What's Russia saying? What's Ukraine saying? Let me also get you that report. Shelling has continued in eastern Ukraine for the last 48 hours. The Ukraine armed forces have released CCTV images that show attacks on an army checkpoint near the border. The war between Ukraine and Moscow backed rebels has been going on for eight years in the Donbass region. The region is witnessing the heaviest fire in years. Ukrainian officials have reported 33 ceasefire violations from Russian backed forces in one day. Amid the heavy fighting, the Russian backed separatist leader has announced the evacuation of residents to southeast Russia. As of today, February 18, a mass centralized evacuation of the population to the Russian Federation has been organized. Women, children, and elderly are to be evacuated first. Russia has denied any knowledge of evacuations. Meanwhile, the US alleges Moscow is preparing for false provocations to invade Ukraine. We are deeply concerned that that is not the path that uh, Russia has embarked on and that everything that we're seeing, including what you've described in the last uh, 24, 48 hours, is part of uh, a scenario that is already in play of creating uh, false provocations. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has warned Russia to face severe consequences if they invade Ukraine. But we are also committed, if Russia takes aggressive action, to ensuring there will be severe consequences in terms of the economic sanctions we have discussed. And we know the alliance is strong in that regard. And again, I thank you for your leadership as a partner in that effort. The warnings come after the U.S. alleged that Russia has stationed 1,90,000 troops in and around Ukraine's border. Earlier, the U.S. had pegged the number of Russian troops at around 1 lakh. If the claims are true, this is the most significant military mobilization since the World War. Russian President Vladimir Putin had declared partial withdrawal of troops on February 15th. But the U.S. and NATO say no big change has been seen on the ground. Russia has rejected the charges by the U.S. and NATO. The withdrawal has already started. We all saw the footage and got the information released by the Ministry of Defense. It is an extended process. It's clear the grouping for the exercises was built up over many weeks. And it is, of course, impossible to withdraw it in a single day. They can't just take off and fly away. It takes time. Amid the saber rattling, Russia has released images of military drills in the Black Sea. Ukraine fears the drills are a precursor to an invasion. Bureau Report, India Today. So the United States says an attack is imminent. NATO says that Russia has amassed troops at Ukraine's borders and the attack could happen anytime. But what's the situation on ground? With me, a group of Indian students and Indian medical students. You're all medical students who are here. Tell me your name and tell me where you study. Jasmine, I study in Venetia. Do, uh, and what about your name and where are you studying? Uh, Ayushin, I, I study in Venetia as well. Okay. You're all studying to be doctors. What's your name? My name is Navneet Kozik. I am studying in uh, Venetia. So all three of you are studying in Venetia and you want to be doctors. Yes. And is there, amongst the Indian students, is there fear, is there apprehension? Uh, are you safe and happy here? 
I don't think there is panic here. Situation is under control and everything is normal. We don't have any restrictions and all the grocery shops and everything is open. No quarantine as such. No quarantine and uh, no. Is there any fear of a, of a Russian attack? No, no panic amongst the students. No panic. No panic. Yeah, everyone is chilling, partying. Nothing. No panic. But you're also studying, right? Yeah, yeah, studying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So you know that was just in jest, but. Uh, are your parents worried in india yeah our parents are worried but we tell you there is nothing to worry about here about the situation and all the things so i told my mother to don't worry about me i am happy i am enjoying here and you don't want to go back uh, see there is a, a examination in june uh, that calls uh, croc so we have to give in third year and we all are in third year that's why we don't we don't want to go and w if we will go back to india we have to return may and so the prices of the uh, airlines are so high nowadays so it's uh, difficult for our parents to give uh, so, so much money like this which is a point because usually a ticket uh, to Ukraine is about 20 to 30,000, maybe a little more. But uh, just now it's more than double that price. But uh, there are these uh, three special flights that are being organized by, by Air India, 22nd, 24th and 26th. So is there a need to go back? Uh, do you feel the need to go back? No. No. I don't, yeah, even I don't think, even I don't think that there's any need for us to go back because we don't see any panic here. The situation here is we have 100% attendance in our college and we have already a croc examination coming up. So even if we miss our classes, we need to come back and cover up all of them. So it would be really difficult for all the students here. And because of the quarantine, we already had uh, to stay back in India for a year, okay. last year. So, so we're not planning we to go also, back here. We have also missed class because of uh, we were staying back in India and the prices were too high f of uh, the air. There's no right. such information from the university also to go back till now. Okay. So while politically uh, and diplomatically tensions may be extremely high, um, uh, the, the Americans say an attack is imminent. There have been a number of cases uh, in border region, but people here on ground, at least here over this weekend, uh, they are... As these young budding doctors say, they are chilling, they are partying, they are not very worried. Uh, but for joining me here on India Today, many thanks and, and I hope all of you stay safe. There are many reports that are emerging uh, that seem to indicate that perhaps there could be an attack. We bring you one more report about how people are preparing for the worst but hoping for the best. Icy cold winds blow across Kiev this Saturday. U.S. President Joe Biden is convinced Russia will invade Ukraine and will not restrict itself just to the border areas, but will target this place, Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, with a population of some 2.8 million people. Several Western diplomats, they've already vacated their embassies or reduced the number of their staff in Kiev, some have moved uh, to another place closer to the Polish border. Some, of course, have reduced the number of their staff strength, hoping to quickly evacuate. As far as Indians are concerned, there is some apprehension. Of course, the government has made it very clear there will be no restrictions on flights uh, from Kiev uh, to India or to a safer location should the need arise. As of now, there is tension in the air and palpable, but life goes on as normal. As you can see around me, uh, even on a weekend, people out uh, early in the morning going about their daily lives. We visited the prestigious uh, Shevchenko University here at Kiev. The convocation ceremony was held. Uh, people are graduating and students are joining the mainstream. Several, of course, saying they are open to becoming volunteers to go and fight at the borders and defend Ukraine from an invasion, should an invasion happen. Of course, the hope is that a diplomatic solution will be found. But looking at troops amassed, and that is what the United States insists, given the number of troops that Russia has amassed at the borders, especially at Belarus, more than 30,000 troops uh, carrying out an exercise if they do not go back after completing that exercise on Sunday and stay on in this area, then it's a very clear indication that there will be uh, action. 
not restricted just to the border areas. Of course, the U.S. says there will be certain false flag operations. Given the situation on ground, there have been a, a, a significant, there has been a significant rise in the number of incidents that have taken place, including an explosion uh, at a gas pipeline uh, in in uh, one of in Lugansk, uh, given uh, Lushank, and uh, in another incident uh, where a automobile. Uh, was targeted. There was an explosion in an automobile. So tension clearly rising in this area. With cameraman Pavan Kumar in Kiev, Ukraine. Gaurav Savant for India Today.